Hey everybody! Today I am going to be doing a requested tutorial. This thing that I'm going to be making was requested by somebody on Tumblr. Um, one of my uh, longtime mutual follows. I mean, we've been following each other for a while. She's pretty awesome, so you should go follow her. I will link it, her Tumblr, down below. So, um, thank you for requesting this because I'm very excited about it. So, this tutorial's for you, uh, Brenna. Hope I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. But, um, so this is for her, and, uh, because she's going to a Comic Con and she wants to be, um, Joker. So she wanted a tail coat tutorial. And I was really excited because I was like, tail coats are awesome, right? And you never really get a chance to. There's not really any reason to make them other than cosplaying, but you know, who cares what people think? Wear a tail coat out in public if you want. I mean, that's awesome. Like, tails, and it's super cute. And it's just so much fun to wear, and it's just, I feel so fancy in it, and it's a good time. So, uh, yeah. So I made this tail coat. Little tails. Tails. No, wait, is that a tail? Yes, it, no, that wasn't a tail. My bad. Tails, right here, see tail? Tail. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited, um... I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, just let me know down below or on any social networking sites I have linked down below. And uh, go check out Brenna's Tumblr. It is uh, punkrockula, which is a great URL. Um, and um, check out my Tumblr too. That'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> um, if you want more tutorials like this, please go ahead and give this a like. If you have any requests, let me know because this was a request and I was pretty excited about it. So if you have any more requests, let me know because I love to make those. Um, and also, if you take a, uh, if you make it, if you make the tail coat or any of the things in my previous videos, and um, I would love if you take a picture and post it on any of the social networking sites I have down below and hashtag use the hashtag p h e r y l o, which is my YouTube name. So that would be great if you could do that because I would love, love, love to see it. And I will go ahead and I'll be sure to give it a like or a reblog or whatever site it's on. I'll be able to, I will be sure to give it some recognition because that's exciting. I'm really excited. And Brenna, I can't wait to see how yours turns out. And I hope this tutorial is helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know. So um, let's just get started. All right, to start off, you're gonna need a outer material, an inner material, a lining, a long sleeve shirt, chalk, pins, buttons, scissors, and a sewing machine. All right, so you're gonna unfold both of your fabrics and lay them both um, with the right sides up. And I layered mine together. So I got my lining on the bottom and then my outer fabric on the top. You're gonna take your long sleeve shirt and fold in the sleeves And you're going to trace around the outside, leaving about half an inch to an inch seam allowance. And trace around the entire, the top three edges. And then when you get to the bottom, you're going to measure how long you want your tail. I believe mine was 12 inches, something like that. So measure the spot and make a little mark with your chalk. I'm going to do that twice because you'll have two separate tails. And then kind of trace your, go ahead and trace your, the shape that you want your tails to be. Now I had to trace uh, over mine several times to get it how I wanted it. So just be patient and work with it. And make sure the split of the tail goes all the way up to, to match the sides. Because if it doesn't have the split all the way up, it kind of looks silly because I had to redo mine. Alright, now take the shirt off of it and cut out through both layers of fabric. 
this just saves a step of cutting out out of the outer and then cutting out a lining so you just cut them out both at the same time. So now you've got two pieces and these are your back pieces. And you can set those aside. You're going to take your shirt with the sleeves folded in again. You're going to trace one side, the right side, uh, what I'm doing anyway. Trace the right side of the shirt. Then you're going to, well you're going to trace the, the shoulder, the top of the shoulder. Then you're going to carefully move the shirt over um, on the left um, a few inches. This is just, and then trace the left side. This is just to give room to be able to button it, so it overlaps and buttons. I mean, so now you have those two separate pieces. You're gonna just kind of trace in the neckline. I did kind of a V neckline. and then just from the V straight down and this will be the front and this is also your um, lining and top fabric layered so you can cut them both out at the same time as seen here now set those aside and you're going to fold both um, your lining and your outer fabric like this um, I did my outer fabric first then my lining. So on the fold you're going to lay your sleeve the top of it and you're going to trace it out and then mark where it hits the shoulder then you'll take the shirt off and just kind of sketch in the shoulder and connect the two edges and then cut them out and set them aside all right, now you're going to take um, the outer pieces and you're going to match them up. So take the back piece um, right side up and then take the two front pieces right side down and match them up to the sides. And you're going to sew, pin and sew the side seams and the top shoulder seams together. Um, now you're going to take your sleeves and you're going to pin and sew the edges of the sleeves. Make sure to have seam allowance too for the sleeves because they can be touchy. So pin and sew those together and flip them inside out, or right side out I mean. Now with the vest you made still inside out, put the right side out sleeves into the vest and fit them into the sleeve hole. Slip them in and match the bottom seam to the side seam and then the top of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. And you're just going to pin around the entire thing on both sides, both sleeves I mean. Now when you get to the top, for me of each um, sleeve, I had a little extra, so I just did a little pleat on either side of the shoulder seams, and it kind of made it a little puffy, but that's all right. And it, but if you don't like that, you can always adjust the sleeve, and so just pin the pleats in place. It's alliteration. Pin the pleats in place. Pin the pleats in. Place. That's kind of hard to say. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> All right, so now you're gonna carefully, very carefully, sew this the sleeves in with your machine. Just go slow and take out the pins as you sew. Now, I now you're gonna assemble the lining the exact same way. Now here I'm just flipping the outer layer inside out and then the lining is right side out 
you're going to put the lining inside the outer and this way the two right sides will be facing because one's right side out one's inside out and then you put them in together and then they'll be facing each other so here I'm sticking the sleeve each the lining sleeves into the outer sleeves right sides together and that's what I did first then you're gonna wanna mat match up the seams on the lining and the seams on the outer fabric so here I'm doing the shoulder seams you're gonna match those up and flatten out the seams and pin now throughout this whole project you'll be wanting to iron the fabric in between each step it'll just make the whole process a lot easier so here I'm flattening out the seams and then pin and you're gonna pin around the entire thing except for a little space I left it on the um, one of the overlapping flaps of the vest you're gonna leave a space open so that you can flip the entire thing inside out but we'll take care of that later so don't worry about having that open but right now just go ahead and pin the rest match them up just matching the tails up pin and sew them Alright, so the whole thing is pinned together, right sides together. And the tails. Alright, now the whole thing is sewn together. Now that opening I was talking about earlier, you're going to go ahead and flip the entire thing inside out. Or right side out, I should say. Now get everything situated, and you can go ahead and iron everything, and then just push the sleeves back through the sleeves, like this, and now you're going to go ahead and iron the, um, you're going to fold in the edges of the little raw circle we had to flip it inside out, fold those in, iron them, and then pin them. And then we're going to continue pinning around the entire thing that we just sewed. We're going to, it's called a top stitch, and that'll just flatten out and make sure that all the seams are nice and flat and clean and it'll look nice. And like I said, it helps if you iron in between. Just go ahead and carefully stitch around the entire thing. Yay, all right, flat seams. Okay, so you can go ahead and iron after this as well. But now we're going to worry about the sleeves. There are two methods you could do. You could just roll them up and then do a blind stitch but I didn't like that my the lining of my sleeves were white because it didn't match the rest so what I did is you're going to fold the outer part of the sleeve in and the inner part out but they're going to match together so you can't see the lining like so see both folds are going to go together so it'll make a clean edge and you're going to do that to both seams and you're going to pin and sew. And you're pinned and carefully sew them. Ta-da! Yay! More clean seams. Alright, now you're going to take your buttons 
and I put four on the flaps, on one flap, sorry, um, and just kind of space them out how you want them, and you can measure. Um, I didn't, but it would probably be wise to measure. Then you take your chalk and make a mark where you want each button, but on the opposite side, say you're putting the buttons on the right, um, you're going to mark on the left because that's where you're going to put the buttonholes. Now if your machine does a buttonhole, that's great. Um, mine does, but I lost the buttonhole presser foot. So I'm going to show you an alternative method. Uh, uses, um, you can either use a zigzag, small zigzag, or a straight stitch. Here I'm showing a zigzag, but it didn't work out for me. So I just use a straight stitch and go back and forth several times and um, on each line and you're going to make a rectangle that's big enough um, for the button that has the diameter of the button but the or sorry the length of the button but the width it does not have to be the button width because you don't want just a huge square or else it'll be slipping in and out so like this. <laughs> I did practice on some fabric first, some spare fabric, and then do it on your actual jacket. And then you're going to uh, snip each of the holes open carefully. Careful not to cut any of the thread. And this should be enough, but for me, I like a little extra protection, so I'm going to use this stuff called Fray Check, and it's like it's a very liquidy glue and you put it on um, raw edges so it doesn't fray and I'm going to put that in the middle of each buttonhole but this is a completely optional step but if you do you're going to have to wait for it to dry before you can go on to the next step now that my fray check is dried I, put my, I went ahead and sewed my buttons on and then I put two buttons on each sleeve And here we are. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understood it. Like I said earlier, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, pictures, post them. Love them. They are awesome. I love pictures of stuff that you've made for my videos. It's very exciting because I'm like, people actually watch them. It's very exciting for me. So, um, well, uh, like I said, any requests, let me know because I was pretty pumped about this. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make it. Brenna, have a fun time at Comic-Con. I will see you guys next time. Bye.